Today, I want to share with you guys my seven recommendations on what you should do before opening up your own private practice in mental health. Hello, everyone. My name is Jasmine. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I am a licensed mental health counselor counseling from the Christian perspective, and I'm also the owner of the Oasis Mental Health Counseling Services. This channel is all about integrating faith and mental health so that we can understand how much God really cares about our mental wellness. So like you read in the title and you listen to the intro, I'm going to be suggesting seven points on what you should do before opening up your own private practice in mental health. So if this is something you're interested in learning, please stay connected. So let's get into this. Number one is get licensed. Before you open your own private practice, you need to have a license in the field. How do you get licensed? You need working hours in the field, then you take an exam. Once you pass the exam, you become licensed in the field of mental health, become a licensed mental health therapist or licensed social worker. And then the next step you can consider is opening up your own private practice. And yes, it may seem simple. Oh, just pass a test, get licensed and move forward. No, it takes a lot of studying. And sometimes it takes a lot of working experience. And I'm going to be talking to you guys about that later on in the steps. But number one is get licensed in the field. That's the number one thing that you want to be aiming for. You want to become a licensed mental health therapist, a licensed social worker in order to open up your private practice in the field of mental health. Number two is that you want to gain experience. You want to work in a clinic, in a hospital, in a group practice. You do not want to graduate from college and go into private practice right away. You want to get your feet wet. You want to get exposure. You want to see what it takes to work in the field before owning your own private practice. This is going to help you to set you up for a successful career when you have your own private practice. So don't just jump into private practice. You want to get surrounded in the field. You want to get working experience in order to then feel the courage and feel fully prepared to walk in to private practice. And so that segues to my next point, number three. Know yourself as a therapist. We fail to understand that when you own your private practice in mental health, you're not just the therapist in that private practice. You are also the owner. You will become an owner. And so there are some things that you need to learn throughout the time when you have your own private practice that really has nothing to do with being a therapist, but everything about being an owner. That's another thing to consider. So before you jump into having your own private practice, you want to know who you are as a therapist. And so working in a clinic, working in a group practice, working in a hospital is going to give you the exposure to understand your identity, your positioning, your styling as a therapist. I would suggest that you don't want to just figure that out in your own private practice when you have it, but you want to be able to exercise that, to do trial and error, to figure yourself out as a therapist in a setting that you can learn, right? That you are being supervised, mentored, that you can be around different therapists and see the way they approach their counseling style. Know who you are as a therapist because eventually then you're gonna have to know who you are as an owner. So first know your first positioning, which is therapist. You can do that safely in a setting that allows you to grow and learn such as a group practice, a clinic, a hospital, etc. And so then that goes to my next point. Once you know who you are as a therapist, you're going to be able to define who are the people you are called to serve. And yes, I said called because I do highly believe that this career of being a therapist, a counselor has to be a divine calling, has to be a divine appointment from God. Before opening your private practice, you want to know who have I been called to serve? What are the groups of people that I feel like I, I'm not an expert, right? We would never be experts in anything, right? Because there's always room to grow. But there's just this specific issue, this specific need that I feel like I have the heart to sit with this person. I feel empathy 
in this situation, in this topic with these groups of people. So when you open up your private practice, I believe that it over time that niche, right? That concentration can evolve. It can change. But when you work for a hospital, a clinic, a group practice, what happens is that you're exposed to different types of mental health situations. And that is a beautiful opportunity to get trained, to get molded, and to really realize when I talk to people who are the groups of people that I really feel inclined to, I love to help everyone. But there's this specific story, this specific need that I feel that I am called to help. And that is totally okay. I feel like I need to free a couple of therapists right now. You love everybody, but you're not called to serve everybody. That is okay. Working for a group of practice, working for a hospital, working for a clinic is going to give you that exposure so that when you're ready to open up your own private practice, you are reaching out to a specific need because you've had the experience of so many varieties that now you're like, okay, now that I'm ready to open my private practice, these are my top three situations, stories, people that I feel like my private practice is ready to serve, ready to help, ready to support. What is my niche? You want to ask yourself that question so that when you market your private practice, you know who you're marketing to, you know who your audience is. Number five, once you've connected, once you've built these, this community, once you've had your experiences, you do not want to burn bridges with perhaps the hospital you worked in or the clinic you worked in or the group practice you worked in. You do not want to break bridges or not stay in contact with the people you worked with. It's very important that you develop a network because owning your private practice, especially when you're not owning a group practice, could be lonely sometimes. You're working for yourself and you're the therapist. Now, when you open up your group practice, if that's in your heart, yes, you'll be working with other therapists because they'll be working under you. But when you open up your private practice by yourself, you're literally the therapist and the owner. So it's very important that you stay connected with people in the field so that you won't be doing life alone in the career. People that if you need some insight on, you know, perhaps a situation that you're working with a client or something about your business, anything that has to do with the career, you're able to connect, right, with the people that you worked with. So my recommendation is don't burn bridges. Don't try to do it alone. Even though private practice could be lonely because you're owning your own private practice and you're working for yourself, you do want to maintain community. You want to maintain connection. Do not burn bridges. Build a network of people, community of people that you can still work with indirectly, directly, right? Um, when you own your own private practice. So do not burn bridges. Build your network starting from now. Number six, save money. Very important. I'm going to say it one more time. Save money. And I'm not just talking about the money that you save on a day-to-day, -day, right? Like for your own personal. Begin to save money now for your private practice, for the future that you have envisioned for your career. It is very important that you understand that opening up your own private practice comes with a cost. And I'm literally saying money. Um, so you don't want to be touching money that it's already owned by something else, right? Every dollar has a name. Dave Ramsey mentions that a lot that every dollar has a name. So make sure that the name of your business has money. <laughs> so even though you probably do not have your own private practice right now, but you already could envision it. Therefore, I would suggest start saving some money in the side so that when you're ready to do this, when you're ready to launch your own, you have the money to be able to put into your practice without having to touch everything else that you have saved for your personal life. So begin to think about that concept about separating my money and giving my business its own account perhaps and its own money that you can manage and use just for your private practice. So save money. That's a big one. And start from now. Little amounts in the future will become big amounts that you can invest to your private practice. And lastly, number seven, is just that when you know you know. 
So if you're listening to me right now and you feel like, wow, everything that Jasmine just mentioned about what it takes, what I should do before opening my private practice, I feel called to that. This is a big indication that you will eventually own your private practice because you feel that courage, right? That just it's in you to be an entrepreneur. So before you open your own private practice, you really have to do a self-assessment. Do I see myself owning my own or am I okay with working for another agency? Because none of the two owning your private practice or working for an agency or hospital, none of these are better than the other. It's just that you have to understand, am I called to this? Do I feel like I have what it takes? That is something you feel that no one can explain to you. You just know it. So if you're already having that feeling, that's an indication that private practice is in your future. So before opening up your own private practice, you must ask yourself, do I see myself owning my own? Do I really see myself as being an entrepreneur? And if the answer is yes, then congratulations. If you can see it, you can do it. You have to believe it. Most importantly, you have to believe that God is on your side, that if he has called you to it, he will supply your every need. But before you enter into that vision, it is very important that you prepare yourself wisely, that you prepare yourself for what is coming. Because if that's in your future, I'm telling you, prepare from now so that the transition could be as smooth as possible. Well, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, send this video to anyone that you think would benefit from this video. Please check out my other videos that I talk about mental health and the faith. And if there's any other topics that you believe that you want me to talk about when it comes to mental health and the faith, please do not hesitate to reach out in the comments because I read them and I want to make sure that I'm speaking to my community that is connected and subscribing. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, take care.